Right, so the last thing that we talked about was basically the how the relation between the, the system variable y and the which is basically the this is the kind of the, the characteristics of the system the, the mass and the damping and the spring coefficient they will show up over here and on the other side you will have the, the input to the system right so the equation will tend to be differential equation in the time domain but once you take the Laplace the equation become multiplication the output and the input will be related just by simple multiplication and that multiplication is the system transfer function right and so here is an equation between an, uh, the y and r where r say the force acting on the system again differential equation between the y and r but once you take the Laplace you will end up with basically a q that's characteristic of the system and, and that q multiplied by r of s which is the Laplace of the input will give you exactly the output right so the input and the output are simply just multiplication in the s domain right so then that that transfer function is very nice to get because then once you have it all you need to do is for different input you just multiply them by the transfer function and you'll get the output okay so now let's look at different input system r of s or r of t okay the force that we apply or the input system to the to the differential equation basically what kind of function do we have so as a function of time that input could be basically kind of a switch you know on and off you apply the force you take this the, the force so the way to write this kind of a step function you know it's off for a certain time and then on for small time we need to know how to write it and more important we need to know how to take the Laplace of that function because it would be here huh? it would be in our equation and to solve this equation we need to be able to handle the Laplace of something like this so how do we describe uh, a step function like this well first of all let's look at the this so this function <laughs> which is zero everywhere and then it's one starting t equals zero all the way till the end this is called basically a unit step function or heavy side function u of t so it's zero when this argument t is negative and it's one when this argument is positive right so as long as t is negative it's zero it's kind of a filter when you think about it when t is zero sorry t is negative you don't get anything and once t is plus what's what's inside is plus it become one so then this one you know with zero until a certain moment a five second eight second one hour and then after that start to become one it's kind of a shifted step function it's u t minus a so again when when t minus a is going to be negative for any t less than a right if t is like a minus 1 or a minus 5 or a minus infinity all those things when t was less than a this argument here is negative and the output is 0 once you cross the a this t minus a become plus and then you get your 1 so mathematically u t minus a is 0 if t less than a and it's 1 when t is greater than a right that red 1 is basically here so now it's very clear how you can make a step function then that just look like this. It's what? How you can get that? I can get something that works between 3 and 5. <coughs> so a function that only works between 3 and 5, 0 everywhere, and only 1 between 3 and 5 is this green thing minus the blue thing. It's ut minus 3 <coughs> minus ut minus 5 because before they were all zero and over here you will have only the green which will give you the one and after that they will all be one right so a step function or a filter function that will just look like this between three and five huh? zero one zero can be written as ut minus three minus ut minus five and a step function that would be basically say uh, between seven and nine or seven and ten how do you write this? Ut minus 7 minus, U -T minus, 7 minus 
minus ut minus 10. So that's first one and then the, the bigger one it will give you that thing. So that's how you write them. Now, how you get the, how you get the Laplace of something like this, right? So we explain t and we explain u of t and ut minus a, right? So the, here is the theory basically. That the Laplace, this kept, he, he write in the textbook, like, or in this presentation, like this, but what he means is the, this L is basically the Laplace. So the Laplace of U T minus A is simply E to minus A S divided by S. Okay, so this is different from uh, Laplace of, of a one. If it was just one by itself, the Laplace of 1 would be 1 over s. But because it's 0 for a certain moment, and then after that it becomes 1, it basically e to minus a s over s. You get the e to minus a s. Right? So this is the kind of the second shift. Remember, the first shift was when we were doing Laplace of e to power a t here e to bar et sine something, or e to bar et cosine something, or e to bar et multiplied by shine, what we used to do is that we will cover e to bar et, get the Laplace of the sine by itself, and then what? Every s replaced by s minus a. So this work kind of the inverse. See, you have the e to minus a s over here, and you are shifting in the t domain. So e to power a t in the s in the t domain transfer to s minus a in the s domain, and e to minus a s exponential in the s domain transfer to a kind of a step or a shift in the in the t domain, right? Again, you don't have to memorize it because it's already in your table, so you will see this, right? So Laplace of u t minus a is e to minus a s over s. Okay. So now we'll, we'll see what is the Laplace of uh, different function multiplied by u t minus a because sometimes the function is not just simply a constant, you know, like zero and then let's put the weight. Sometimes you start at certain time and then after that you basically push, you know, you like you're increasing the force. You start pushing the brake and you're increasing the force. So the function that we are trying to get the Laplace, yes, it will start after a certain moment, but also it will not always be constant. Okay? So the we need the rule for something like this. So here is the rule. The Laplace of Basically, f t minus a <coughs> multiplied by u t minus a is simply e to minus a s f of s. Simply. Well, it's, yeah, it's not simply, right? You have to prove it, and it's really very long proof. But what, what does this really mean? It means that the only way to get this Laplace of u t minus a if it's multiplied by a function of the same way. So meaning that if I have u t minus 5 or t minus 3, I cannot get the Laplace of sine t. I don't know what the Laplace of something like this. But I know the Laplace of t minus 3, u t minus 3. Okay, and the Laplace of this is basically e to minus a s or e to minus 3 s multiply by the plus of the sine t. Huh? The plus of the sine t. So this this put a lot of burden on us because anytime you have u t minus a, you have to bring that function next to it in that form. So what if you have just sine t next to it? What are you gonna do? Sine t u t minus three. Like the moment he start that force at and this a is like 5 or 3 or something, and he would like to put a sign on this, well, the sign need to be in the form t minus 3. If it's t, you don't know the solution. You don't know the Laplace. 
or at least it's not simply that shift. You have to do the integration. We don't want to do the integration. So then, basically, what will happen is we will have to turn our sine t into t minus three. So you will do all those mathematical tricks in order to get it in that form exactly, right? Once in, in that form, then it's simply the only thing that will happen is you just put a minus a s next to it. Huh? Exactly the opposite of when you had e to power a t shine t, and all we did was shifting the s to s minus a in the s domain. So here is an example of, of this and we, how we are going to do that. So the function that the input say to the system is something like this. Huh? It's piecewise continuous. It's basically three parts. One part is constant. That's That lasts from 0 to 1. It's 2. And one part that's basically half t square. Right? And I'm saying piecewise continuous because you can see that basically suddenly here it dropped from this value to that value. And here suddenly it dropped from this value to that value. That's okay we still can get the Laplace. So part A, part two, and, and C, part three. This is simply cosine T, right? So first of all, how you write this bracket thing doesn't work when you get the Laplace. We need this plus this plus this so that we can let the Laplace operator go into the three of them and get the Laplace of each one of them and then add. So this f of t can be written as, how do you write that too? First of all, how do you write something like this that starts from zero and finish at one? U t minus, minus the small, no, it's the big, right? Minus u t minus one, correct? U t minus u t minus one will end up being something like this. We'll start at zero, finish at one. So that two is multiplied by U T Where is my plus and we will have to write this half T square. The half T square will be multiplied by something that will go from one and finish basically at pi over 2 ut minus 1 because that's the start point minus <laughs> exactly minus is it pi or pi over 2 pi over 2 which is so pi is 3.145 and so pi over 2 is what 1.57 something all right and plus cosine multiply by u of t minus pi over 2. And so now the challenge for us is, for example, that cosine. To, to, to make that transformation simply e to minus a s multiplied by the Laplace of the cosine, that cosine t need to become cosine t minus pi over 2. exactly. But let's start with the easy one first. How about the two? So the two multiplied by u t minus one. So by the way, I, I would like to say, yes, this is really very kind of tedious. But you know, look at what you are getting in return. What you are getting in return is that the differential equation, the ordained differential equation, second order differential equation become Algebraic situation, right? So it, it yeah, it it's deserve you know a little bit struggling in the Laplace part. It's okay. That's a very cheap price. So let's have two multiply by u of two. Sorry, two multiply by u of t. Like, the the right, the two is coming from you. Sorry, right. So the two multiply by u of t is that's simply constant. Two. So it's it, we are doing the Laplace of u of t, right? The plus of u of t, that's basically e to minus a s, right? So that's constant. That's basically as if it's 2 over s. The t minus 1, what are you going to do about this? If only the 2 over here 
every t was t minus 1. Well, the 2 doesn't have any t minus 1. So the constant doesn't have to be shifted. Right? As a matter of fact, let's look at the first one that we did. When we said the Laplace of u t minus a is e to minus a s over s, how did this happen? Why it's like this? Well, according to the rule, you multiply e to minus a s times the the f of s. Why the f of s was 1 over s? Because there is 1 over here. So he considered this Laplace as if f 1 times u t minus a. And that this one is already shifted. It's in the form t minus a. Because there is no t in it in order to make it change. So because of this, the 1 by itself is 1 over s. And the fact that you have 1 multiplied by u t minus a and it's in the right form, it's f t minus a multiplied by u t minus a. That's why you get an extra e to minus a s. All right? So it's just the Laplace of the constant times the function. The Laplace of the function. The Laplace of this function, whatever this function is, mm -hmm. multiply by e to minus a s. As long as this function is in the form of every t inside this function need to be in the form t minus a. So for a constant, I cannot really do anything. There is no t in it in order to make it t minus 5, for example. There is no, there is no t. So that's why the, the constant pass. But a cosine t, a t squared, all those guys, we have to fix them. And we'll see how he's going to do this in a second. All right? So first of all, here I'm explaining to you, you already know that, how you can make a function, a filter like this. So a filter function that starts from 1 and finish pi over 2, that's simply u t minus 1 minus u t minus pi over 2. Right? And it's obviously because... You multiply, you're subtracting the one that starts early minus the one that will start later. You got this part? This is important to how to write the function to start with before we even try to take the Laplace. All right. And so he, this is the expression that we end up writing. And so I am pointing out to the problem that we have. The problem is, for example, <coughs> this t square doesn't work with t minus 1 and doesn't work with t minus pi over 2. Why? <coughs> because the t is not like t minus 1. This t needs to be replaced by t minus 1. So how can I do that? Just think. We, we need, if only we had t minus 1 multiplied by u t minus 1. What can I do to make this t squared to look to, to be t minus 1? What can I do? Forget about the half, of course, right? We don't care about that half. That half can sit outside. We don't care. It's the t square. How can I make the t square to be in the form every t is t minus 1? Anyone? For a free homework problem? t minus 1 squared. t minus 1 squared, but... but T minus 1 square is not the same as T square. I, I wish it was T minus 1 square, but I need to turn the T square into things that are in the form of T minus 1. You did T minus 1 times T plus 1 times. If you multiply, you have to divide 2, and then you'll have to figure a way to get rid of the... Anyone else? So magically, I cannot just delete T minus T square and replace it with T minus 1. Right? Where did it come from? I cannot do that. Can you divide by t squared and multiply by t minus 1? So you are saying let's multiply by t minus 1 and divide over t minus 1? Or t squared. Right, and then you are hoping that the one that you divide by will disappear with the t squared? Yeah, Somehow? It. How they will disappear? They will not. They will stay there. It's math. It's like black magic. No, if it only... What do you mean? No, no, we'll, we'll, well, let's stay at t. We're not going to basically uh, turn it into an x where x is basically t plus 1 and stuff like this. No. How about... t minus 1 plus that, yeah. No, I said it first. Well, you started to write it first. You didn't say it. Yeah, first. well, so it doesn't qualify for a free homework. No. And then what? Then what? Factor out the plus 
the square become t minus 1 square, perfect. And then it will be 2 t minus 1, perfect. And then it will be 2. That's okay too, that's a constant, right? So, here's what he did. Look at this. So the t square, he took the t square, or basically what this is what he did. He took the t square and make it t minus 1 plus 1, which is t square, all this thing, and you get three terms, right? So again, the half u t minus 1, constant. We cannot do anything about it. It's already shifted. So this half u t minus 1 is simply e to minus s, and the constant get an s. Correct? Without the shift, half, the plus of half is half over s. And because of the shift, you get half over s multiplied by e to minus as. f of s, e minus as. t minus 1, u t minus 1, that's again, what's the Laplace of t? Simply t, what's the plus of t? 1 over, one over s. 1 over s square. Oh. The plus of t is 1 over s square. And why do we get minus e minus s? Because it's not t. It's t minus 1 multiplied by u t minus 1. So you have the heavy side function shifted and the function shifted. Is that clear? Huh? Clear as mud. Really? Clear as why? So anyone has a problem with the Laplace of t to start with that is 1 over s square? No. And the Laplace of t minus 1 multiplied by u t minus 1, which is the, sh the topic that we are discussing right now. You complain or you don't understand that it has to be minus s over s square. All what's new? The new is that that shift in the function and the heavy side function multiplied by it, will the only transfer, the only change is e to minus s square. That's what we are doing. So for example, if I, ha if I know the Laplace of the cosine, or cosine t, but then I have Laplace of cosine t minus a multiplied by u t minus a. The only difference is that I will get the Laplace of the cosine, but then I will just have e to minus a s extra. Where did your a go? Because it's t minus 1. Oh, yeah. Let me write this in, in green. So u t minus 1, and this is minus 1. And this is t, and as a result, the only difference is this e minus s. So t minus a, u t minus a. What do you get? E minus a s. Compared to the original one, which was simply just the one over s square. You got it? All right. So this was, uh, how about t square? So forget about the minus one. t square, the Laplace of t square is? Is what? What's the Laplace of t square? Laplace of t square is? Two factorial, right? Which end up being? Two. Right over s cube, but where is the half? Where did it go? Because there was, the two go went away with this half, right? So there is like two here, or or this was like two, and there is half over here, and they cancel with each other. So the t by itself, t square is supposed to be s cube. And because it's t minus a square, every t, not one of them, every t on the t square is t minus one multiplied by u t minus one, you get simply just e minus s. Right? Does this make sense? The last one, the cosine. So cosine t, u t minus something, t by over 2. And you are looking at this and say, well, that's not t minus half, that's t. Alright? <coughs> so, we need a trick to turn this cosine t to basically, ideally, the t need to disappear and instead it should be t minus 
the a here this u t minus a whatever this number here this t need to be replaced so he got lucky because the cosine and the sine they look exactly like each uh, each other except they are shifted so will this trick you know go for the cosine and the shine or no not really so it's just the cosine and the sine they are shifted so basically you write well cosine t that's simply sine t minus and look at this also you know if this was minus five we are screwed too but it's because the period of the when the cosine basically come back again and complete the cycle is basically uh, to buy he end up basically uh, getting lucky and sending it to a sign so anyway so you got the sign and you get now sine t minus pi over 2 and t u t minus pi over 2 so exactly the form that we want so what do we do we just forget about the shift we just think about sine t what's the Laplace of sine t 1 over s square plus 1 and because of the shift in the t and the, sh and the u multiplied by it you get the extra e minus a s what is the s pi over 2 pi over 2 you see that it's e to minus pi over pi s over 2 so right so the 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 pi the e this is the a so the a is a pi over 2 minus pi over 2 minus a s right so what are we trying to do we were trying to get this Laplace of this function this three brackets end up basically being written like this and we went for the Laplace of each one of them the heavy side function require that when you try to get the Laplace of something like this the function also will be shifted that you are multiplying by the heavy side function Sometimes it's easy to do like the constant, you don't do anything, it's already shifted. Sometimes it's just a simple mathematical trick, let's add an A and subtract an A. And sometimes you just have to be creative and figure how you do this. Alright? Questions? When, when you do the, um, like for where it was turn, you know, turned on and turned off, like in the middle one, the uh, T squared. Right. Do you do, you do it for, see? So you have to do it at the t minus 1 and the t minus 1 or pi over 2. So any, in general, any filter function like this, from starting from a to b, whatever the a and the b, 5, 7, 5, and pi over 6, how do you write something like this that starts from a to b? Can anyone help? U minus, u, t minus a, minus a, minus u, t minus b. Correct. That's correct. Right, so if this function, half t square, this is the, the name of the function, half t square, and the operation starts from 1 and finish at this point, pi over 2, then it should be multiplied by that half t square, whatever this function is, should be multiplied by ut minus 1 minus ut minus pi over 2. ut minus a minus ut minus p. You got it? Which part is annoying? You get you get this part. I was just trying to look at the solution. So, but but you get this part, right? Yeah, I get that. All right. So let's look at the solution. What he did. So he, where is it? It, it was right, it was right on it. Yeah. So he got the half t square, and he multiplying the half t square by a filter function starting from t equal one and finishing at t equal by over two right that's the start that's the end that's the ut minus a ut minus a and this one is ut minus p that's the end right well we can talk about in the break right now the final function we'll deal with is basically this so this is an impulse function the Dirac delta function will give it the symbol delta so delta t, how it will look like? It basically peak at, if this is t, this function basically 
will peak at t equals zero. And it's zero everywhere. But at this place, basically, it go to infinity. What this mean? It basically, they, they basically describe it mathematically as this. So it will have a weight. This is at any function that generally, not just the rug delta function of of delta of t, but basically the rug delta function of, say, t minus a. So it will have a starting point here. So it will have a height of 1 over k, and it will have a weight of basically k. Right? So it starts, say, at a and finish at a plus k. But this k go to 0. Mathematically, this k to go to 0. So basically, it happened in instantaneously at 0 time, and it shoot up to infinity. However, that make the, the area under the curve equal to 1. Right? So it's 1 over k <coughs> when it's basically in this place and 0 everywhere else. Right? And so that's basically, you know, that's how you simulate uh, uh, an impulse. You know, when you hit, when you hit your force, basically you use a force to hit your system. So it's not a continuous function. It's just like one big impulse. Right? So we need to basically figure out the impulse of something like this. Right? So, here is the impulse of the Dirac delta function, e to minus a s. Right? So if it's t minus a, it's e to minus a s. If that impulse function happen at moment a, <coughs> Right. And so it's simply just sim the Laplace is A minus A S. Right? So this is important because then remember all those Laplace also work the other way. So if you have in the solution E to minus A S in the S domain and you are trying to take the inverse, well E to minus A S without anything next to it, huh? just a constant, it becomes the delta function the Dirac delta function. So basically, your solution will just jump up. All right. This is a very cool thing about the Laplace transformation and the Fourier transformation that we're going to talk about today as well. So, obviously, f of s times g of s, if you want to take the inverse of those things, will not be f of t, g of t. The Laplace is an integration, right? So the, the Laplace of cosine t sine t is not simply let's get the Laplace of this guy and the Laplace of this guy and basically multiply them. Only the summation, only the Laplace of cosine plus sine is let's get the Laplace of the cosine by itself plus let's get the Laplace of the cosine sine by itself and add them. All right? So he's basically saying that it's not the case. Multiplication in the t domain is not the multiplication in s domain. As a fact, the, the, the integration, sorry, the multiplication in the s domain become this, become integration in the time domain, right? And not any simple integration. It's integration with a shift in one of the function. You pick one of them, f of s or u of s, it's up to you. But basically, you shift one of them, so this is t minus tau, and tau is the dummy argument. Tau is the dummy argument in the in the in the integration. I can just make it f of phi g t minus phi d phi. But at the end of the day, this integration will be function of t. After I do this integration, one t will survive over here, and also I will substitute with zero and t. So this will become right. So you would. So this actually. This is called, this integration form is called convolution of <coughs> f and g. And people would basically make it with that symbol. They, in our book, it's like a really nice star thing. Huh? So when you see that symbol, it's basically, it means that this is a convolution. It's that integration. So you should be thinking right now, what are the chances that I will get something like this, that I will... Not, I would gonna take the Laplace of it more than you think. 
this is actually very common and in the in the second part I will show you actually personally in my research we are faced with that integration and we don't want to do it we don't want to do that integration so rather than actually doing the integration what do you think we should we do and, and see, we don't do the Laplace of the integration. We just take the Laplace of the two functions by themselves, which is easy, right? So rather than multiplying those two functions in the T2 mean and integrating them and worry about integrating them, no, we just basically get the Laplace of F of S and the Laplace of U of S, multiply them in the S domain, that's easy, and take the inverse of the end product What after I multiply them. Take the inverse, and it will be as if I did my integration. Right? So it's a very cool, cool trick. And all I, I'm not going to ask you about it more than just, I would you like you to remember the name. Right? So what is a convolution? It's basically integration, it's this weird integration. And how people get away with it? Rather than doing it, they take the Laplace of the individual function, multiply them in the S domain. Now they have the solution S domain, which is useless. Right? But if you take the inverse, then it becomes useful. You get the actual solution. And the red right there where it says f of t star g of t? So that star, right, so that star mean they are not simply multiplied by each other. They are convoluted by each other. What is convoluted by each other? You put them under integration and you shift one of them. So he's basically saying that if, so what this what happened. If you have two functions that's convoluted with each other, the solution is get the Laplace of each one of them and invert it. All right. Very good. So this is this is the bad example of something like this because, but that's what the book is using because I I don't really need to. Uh, this is too easy to actually solve. I don't need to do the convolution theory for that. But basically saying, let's imagine here as f of s and g of s. Huh? He's doing it in the other way. He's basically saying, if I have something like this and I would like to take the inverse, according to the theory, what should I do? So you have those two guys and you would like to get the inverse. So the, the way to do it is that rather than multiplying them in this domain, no, you basically get f of t and g of t and you integrate in the time domain, as if the integration is easy in the time domain. Right? But basically say, well, 1 of s by itself, that's 1. S minus A, that's E to power AT. So the inverse of something like this is let's take those and convolute them. So it's F of tau. Here is the, this is what he's calling F of T. He can pick any one of them to be F and the other one is G. The G will be shifted, the F is not shifted. So he will shift, obviously, the G, because when you shift the one, you don't do anything about it. It's the same. And here is E, the F of T. And then he's doing the integration time domain, and basically he's getting this. All right? So what's the other option that we would have? The other option is that we can break this into basically uh, two fraction, or we can actually think of this as S squared minus SA. So it's, it's about to become sine or cosine if we only have S squared and then a of s, then we need a over 2 square, right? a over 2 square, so that when you open that bracket, the a over 2 multiplied by s multiplied by 2 become a s. So you add a over 2 square and you subtract a over 2 square. And you'll end up basically forming your, say, sign. Anyway. Right? The other thing too is that we also said that division in the S domain is just simply an integration in the time domain. You d again, you don't need the convolution. You don't need to think of those as two functions. So this problem can be solved actually with many, the, many times. Right? So the, the integration <coughs> in the, so the division in the S domain is integration in the T domain. Right? So S by 1 over SA, 1 over S minus A by itself is simply A to power AT. And because you have 1 over S extra, that's why you integrate in the T domain from 0 to T, which will translate exactly the same way. It, you basically are here. You will end up exactly with the same result. Right? 
But anyway, so this is the convolution theorem, basically, that this integration is equivalent to multiplication in this domain, all right? And you can, it, it's, it doesn't matter which one is first and which one is the second. So f of g is the same as g time f, and you can basically add it, you distribute over the addition and all those rules. All right, so let's let's do one more problem. <laughs> Actually, over here you're just simply saying that the see this differential equation over here. When you assuming all the initial value are zero, y of zero and y prime of zero is zero, then this guy disappear and the equation simply become input y or output y of s is the up the r of s time the transfer function so r of t is r of s and this y of s and all those constants become just basically the transfer function so he's saying that now the solution for something like this y equal r of s q of s this is multiplication in this domain so it can be replaced by convolution in the t domain so depending on how easy that integration is basically this could also be a nice trick all right now this this would be useful in case the function or the the derivative has a variable constant, a variable coefficient. So rather than 5 dy by dt and 7 dy by dt, you actually have t multiplied by dy by dt. Right? So the rule is that the multiplication over here in the t domain become differentiation in the s domain. Remember, the, the Laplace of the differentiation was, what was the Laplace of df by dt? The new one? Capital S, yeah. F of S, right? Minus F small of zero. Yeah. So the differentiation was multiplication. And the multiplication is differentiation. All right? So that's easy to remember. So if you have a T, F of T, you basically just differentiate this. So for example, the Laplace of t cosine t, we'll forget about the t. What was the cosine? s over s squared plus 1. And what's the result of having that extra t? Minus d by ds. So you differentiate this one more time. Right? Yeah. And so, by the way, all those rules are sitting in one table. Right? One table at the end of the chapter. So you will find all those rules for multiplication, differentiation, integration. So then, depending on the problem, you basically go through that table and figure which one will actually help you. Right, so this is simply what he's saying over here. Right, that if you have a multiplication of t, this transfer into simply minus d by ds. Right, or if you have differentiation in the s domain, well, it's multiplication in the t domain. It's work both way, right? This is just to remind you so that we are ready to solve this problem. Right? You all know this, right? Of course. Absolutely. All right. Let's go for this one. So what's new about this differential equation? The the right. There is a coefficient that is variable. It's not simply 5 time y prime. It's t time y prime. All right. So, y prime by itself, if it was y prime, it was dy by dt, you get sy minus y of 0. And because you have the extra t, it's minus d over ds of those guys. What will happen? Well, the differentiation of sy with respect to s is, is what? Remember? A, B, if you have two functions 
of S. A and B are not constant. Those are function of S. So if you differentiate this with respect to S, it's the first time the differentiation of the second plus the second time the differentiation of the first. So when it comes to S, Y, is S is function of S? Of course. Is Y is function of S? Is Y is function of S? We always write Y of S. How is it not function of S? Y is function of S, right? Just like F was function of T. Y is function of S. Okay, it's the Y of zero. It's not function of S. Why? No, because it's a constant. That's the initial value. Y of zero, that's seven, nine, the initial value of Y. It's a constant. So that's why it's not function of S. All right, so this guy will go away from the function. So th this S, Y will end up being those two guys. Why? Because S, Y, well, the, the first, which is, or the second, the Y time the definition of S is one, plus the S time the definition of the second. What differentiation of Y? dy by ds. All right, where is this minus coming from? Because there was minus outside. And I will leave you to enjoy the second order by yourself. All right? So this is this is by the, the second order, right? And then if you add a t, what is the price for something like this? You differentiate. One more time, you differentiate this. You will get those two guys. Okay? So then in the problems, huh? If you have a coefficient that is t, this is basically what you use. t y prime or t double y prime, you basically use those guys. Okay? So let's solve this in the next five minutes. So we are ready now. We are ready because look at this problem. This problem is basically saying solve t y double prime plus one minus t y prime plus n y equals zero. So see the problem is the y prime is multiplied by t and the y double prime is <coughs> multiplied by t. So it's not simply this is a second derivative and it become a square y of s. No, I will have to go back to this page and use this formula <coughs> for t y double prime. And for t y prime, I will use that formula. All right? And by the way, that n He's basically saying that this n is 1 and 2, and it can be a different number. So not only the coefficient is variable, but he's asking us to solve the problem for different n's, too. So we just have to leave this n as a, as a variable in the... Or a parameter, not a variable, a parameter. All right, so ty double prime, <coughs> this is coming from the previous page. ty prime, here is this guy. 1 multiplied by 1 prime, that's the old gold, old old good days, you know, the good old days when we just simply just y prime, what do you get? S y minus y of zero, right? And n y, that's n capital Y. Here is a differential equation in the S domain. It's supposed to be algebraic. That was the promise. We started this chapter with the promise that when you take the Laplace, you get algebraic equation. What happened? What happened? Why it's not? Do you see why it's not algebraic equation? Yeah, yeah, because we had the coefficient, variable coefficient, not five and seven. But by the way, the mass of something like this is horrible. So you know the fact that we just get an ordinary differential equation is I mean that's still it's a step forward. You know, it's it's not algebraic as before, but it's not that bad because because it's still first order. So yeah, I mean you turn second order with variable coefficient into basically first order with, huh? so basically it's not that bad. So how do we solve it? How do you solve or the differential equation? Well, you integrate. You put dy on one side, ds on the other side, you integrate dy huh? and ds. So he's basically cleaning up things and here is the dy over y, and here is the ds, all the other stuff on s. OK? 
okay and so he's this s minus s square is simply basically s time s minus one right and then he's breaking basically the the two brackets to s and s minus one and then he's integrating this by itself and integrating this by itself all right so what is uh did I, did I write this before what is the integration of ds over s right ln s and if it was s minus one right and if it was ln a s plus b then it's one over a right ln s a s plus b anyway so this guy become this and this guy become this right why is it is why it's s to power n my plus one because there, there was n plus one over here and so you can delete it and basically put it on top of the and of course you know that ln a minus ln b is ln a over b this side is ln y this side is ln those guys this must be that y equal to this so y is this guys we are done solving it in the s domain remember anytime we have a differential equation what are the steps one take the laplace we did to solve it in the s domain unfortunately it was a differential equation in the s domain but we solve it we got y of s now what's step number three take it, back. take it back we take this back we take this back so this taking it back is basically this can you see it why it's this. You enjoy it over the break. Let's take 15 minutes break and you can look at this and see why it's like that.